Boom. Right. I write characters who believe strongly in the absurd. I think Donald Trump is highly theatrical, but yet he probably thinks he's just a regular human being. But to me, he is absurd. He's a complete, unadulterated fool. And that's what I require in what you refer to as a strong Robert O'Hara actor. I need someone who can invest in the honesty of Tom Fuller. This quote comes from an interview done of Robert O'Hara done for This Stage LA. I enjoy this quote because I feel like it gives us a good feel of what O'Hara looks for in his actors and his characters in his plays. My purpose today is to inform you all about the playwright of Booty Candy, Robert O'Hara. Uh, to prepare for this speech, I read the play, read interviews and articles about him, and also read interviews of him. Uh, just to kind of tell you what we're going over today, we'll be going over his life and career, his writing process, and his writing philosophy. Uh, to begin, let's look at his life and career. Um, my first piece of evidence comes from an interview done by Mark Lowry for TheaterJones.com. When asked about being black and gay, and when he knew he was gay, O'Hara said, both of them came from birth. I was born black and gay. I was not socialized to be gay. I always knew I was different. I was always interested in something that a lot of kids were not into. I like this quote because it shows that Robert knew who he was and how he was from the moment he was born. Uh, he wasn't afraid of it, and he embraced it in his life, and included it in his work. My next piece of evidence comes from an interview done for Playwrights Horizons. In it, O'Hara says, I would put on shows in the backyard and had a bunch of cousins, and we were always making up songs and singing and dancing and generally performing. My grandmother called me the ringleader. Um, I like this quote because it shows us that Robert was involved in acting and directing and writing from his childhood, and it seems as if it was he was born to do. My last piece of evidence comes from an interview done for This Stage UK by Howard Sherman. But O'Hara could have just as easily made his debut on Broadway as a playwright, thanks to his own body of work, which includes Mankind, Barbecue, Booty Candy, and Insurrection, Holding History. This makes him one of the few U.S. theater artists successfully making a career as both playwright and director. He has experienced resistance when he seeks to direct his own plays here at Gills, though he often does so. Um, I like this quote because it reflects on O'Hara's work as a director as well as a playwright. Uh, as well as directing his own work, O'Hara recently directed the acclaimed production of Slave Play on Broadway. Uh, now that we've just talked about his life and career, let's discuss O'Hara's writing process. My first piece of evidence comes from an interview done for HerbAlbertAwards.org. In it, O'Hara says, It sounds odd to say that I'm not going to let even my own imagination limit me, but it's true. I often tell playwrights not to imagine what should come next, but rather to imagine what should not come next allowing themselves to push the imagination in new ways and not be limited by how it usually functions. I really like this quote. Uh, I think it shows how O'Hara is really open to anything happening in his shows, not just what is safe or nice. Uh, he knows he can write something, and if it doesn't work, he can just change it so that it does. My, ne my next piece of evidence comes from an interview done for the Clyde Fitch Report. In it, O'Hara says, I look to something that is a very difficult topic to deal with and try to find a beautiful story inside of it. Everyone is welcome, but no one is safe. When you come into the theater, you can't come into a space for safety. This is another quote that I think speaks volumes. Uh, Robert knows that theater can be a truly powerful tool and used for any number of things. Uh, by dealing with unsafe topics, he can create a dialogue to help act on these issues and create solutions for the problems he highlights. My last piece of evidence comes from an interview done for Alexis Solowski for the New York Times. When asked if his writing had changed as the political landscape changed, O'Hara said, Completely, because the world is a satire now. Where do satirists go? When I think of an idea, all I had to do was just turn on, turn on the TV. It's been handled. Uh, I chose this quote because I think it gives us a bit of his thoughts on our world and trying to be funny inside of it. Uh, anything that he thinks can be made fun of or turned around already is in real life, and sometimes not in a funny way. Uh, now that we've discussed his writing process, let's talk about Robert's writing philosophy. Uh, my first piece of evidence comes from an interview done for WBUR, Boston's NPR station. When asked if humor was a good way to discuss serious issues, O'Hara says, I think it is a great way to talk about it. You want to make them laugh so that it goes them easier. I think humor is a fantastic way to find what I call the beauty and the horror of it all. I make it compelling to watch as I try to eviscerate certain ideas. That's how I work. I love this quote because it gives us a bit of the switcheroo O'Hara puts into his work. Um, I think he is correct in how he says that humor helps things go down easier. Uh, if people can laugh about something, they're definitely more open to talking about that idea. My next piece of evidence comes from an interview done for this stage. Uh, in this interview, O'Hara says that he wants his audience to choke on his plays. To explain this, he says, I don't want them to easily digest the play and then go home and forget it. 
I want you to remember the sensation of the play, just how everyone knows that knows what it feels like to choke. It means something happened to you physically. Uh, this is the biggest quote that I think I found. So sorry. Uh, the, this quote was mentioned multiple times in multiple interviews, and I think for a really good reason. O'Hara's plays often deal with topics that should not be easily swept under the rug or disregarded. They are issues that need to be discussed and talked about and solved to better our world. My last piece of evidence comes from an interview done for the Clyde Fitch Report. In it, O'Hara says, Today there is a wider, wider array of writers. There is more diversity and variety in the stories, and they aren't always centralizing trauma, whiteness, or straightness. They are centralizing queerness. It's just the everyday story of our lives. And straight people have been doing this for a long time, or writing about the facts of our lives. Um, I like this quote because O'Hara is highlighting how more people of different viewpoints than just the straight white male are being able to speak their truth and tell their stories. While there isn't nearly close to enough representation in theater, many people are making large steps to make sure that there is. Now that we've discussed everything, let's move on to our conclusion. My purpose today was to talk to you all about playwright Robert O'Hara. Um, to reiterate, the three points we talked about today were his life and career, his writing process, and his writing philosophy. Um, what I'd like for you to take away from this speech is that Robert O'Hara is a playwright who tries to do everything he can to make you okay with being uncomfortable and knowing the things that need to be discussed in our society. Uh, to end today, I'd like to end with a quote of O'Hara's from an interview done for the Clyde Fitch Report. Uh, when asked about trying to make a name for yourself and making a legacy in theater, he says, for example, imagine that in 14 weeks you're going to make an American Idol. There's a mentality that you're going to be an idol. It's draining, demeaning, and demoralizing. How is this your last chance? So many actors want to quit if they don't get that one role. Don't be an idol, be an artist. Thank you.